Welcome to another video in my seven and a quarter inch gauge build series and there is two weeks to go until the open weekend when I need to finish this loco and uh, there is still quite a bit to go although I think um, in terms of the you know the wiring and the electronics um, I'm pretty much done it doesn't look particularly nice I think I need a couple of uh, um, you know cable ties and everything just to make this a little bit more tidy but what you can see here is I reused uh, my, four, my 4 QDD and 010 that's going to control my loco and by the way the uh, the control is pretty much the same what I have used in my previous loco as well so I have two batteries these are my old batteries uh, that uh, I mean I replaced them with new batteries that's in the in the older loco but I still have these in my uh, garage I think this one is still good this one is pretty much dead it, it measures like 10 volts uh, but in order to test this I think it's good enough and I used the exact same setup as last uh, time that I just mentioned before I just brought you a little bit closer so what I have here is uh, I have a main switch I have a main fuse um, that so this fuse is sitting in between the two batteries so if this fuse is uh, disconnected then the 24 volt circuit is disconnected and I also have a power meter here that I reviewed in uh, one of the previous videos and I have this uh, four pin charger which is connected to the battery positive and a battery negative with a 10 no I think it's 6 amp fuse uh, to protect it in case anything happens so these two wires are connected well two wires from this connector are connected to this battery another is connected to other battery um, as I said this main fuse sits in between the two batteries and the other two terminals in my case is this one and this one that goes into these uh, two relays so these are 24 volt relays and uh, the main switch is going to energize the relays so I have even if I have the main fuse here 24 volts only flows up to here and then uh, this, this main switch also taps off uh, from the uh, from the 24 line from the two batteries and then when it's switched on then it energizes the two relays so it gives power to the DNO 10 and also as you can see on the negative side I have the 10 amp shunt which is used by this uh, power measuring uh, display voltage display just to measure the current and I have a quite a few different wires here but they just basically just go uh, to the DNO and this wire goes one of the uh, the, the motors which are, which I was already testing and I mean in order to get the the local driving this is all you need uh, I have seen that in um, in in other locos in clubs instead of using these smaller relays they just use like uh, or instead of using this fuse they just use like a normal uh, consumer uh, breaker and I think that's you know that's 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 pretty good as well I wanted to use these smaller ones so that's going to be the main panel which is going to be accessible from the top of the loco and of course everything here is going to be hidden so this is more like the power side uh, where all the uh, you know drive and that related electronics side and then on the other side we have the sort of that low power side and I just had to remove the camera because otherwise it's uh, <laughs> it's really difficult to get in here um, there are two terminal blocks uh, these here so that gets 24 volts once the main relay is closed so that's the power when the loco is running I have a DC DC converter that gives me 12 volts so that's for the lights and I have a bunch of 24 volts small relays here which are going to switch the 12 volts for the different lights and the small wires that you see here these white wires are actually coming from oops you can see up here that's actually coming from the controller so those are the different switches for the various lights I have five lights so like uh, the you know the headlights on both sides and the tail lights and the cab light so this is why I have four relays the sixth one is not used at the moment uh, in terms of the sound I had a soundboard in my other my older loco but here I just opted to buy a simple card horn and uh, that is powered by one of the batteries so I have a separate tap off uh, from for that battery and then I have a separate relay which is going to switch the power so this horn uh, uses like 
3 amps or something like that. So I did not want to run it from this DC converter because it might just uh, blow. So anyway, so that taps off, uh, sorry, this one taps off from the one of the batteries and uh, that operates the horn. And by the way, since I'm talking about controller, I decided that I'm just going to reuse uh, my existing controller from the old train, the wired controller, uh, because uh, simply I just don't have time to build a new one. Uh, so I will probably build a new one in the future. So that's how it looks like. So I thought that since I'm going to have a new loco, it's going to be a lot more tidy and I'm going to have much more room and it's going to be a much better cable management. Well, uh, it's not exactly that. I mean, most of these things are just wired up at the moment, but I probably need some of these self-adhesive uh, uh, cable holders that I can zip tie to. And uh, of course I have a couple of cables here, which goes to the lights that are just dangling on here. By the way, I have the buffers and the um, coupling on as well. Uh, and yeah, and that's the other side. So just to show you that she runs, I had the, I just put on the battery terminals. I haven't uh, fastened it down. So first I put the main uh, fuse on and I turn the main switch on. So this uh, screen comes on and my controller comes on as well. And as I said, the, the ba this one, this battery is pretty much dead. So this is why it is measuring a low voltage, but I can turn this on. So that's the ignition and then she runs. So let me pan the camera down. There she goes. Okay, and I have, I think I have these lights working as well. So you can see the two uh, white lights, headlights, and I have the tail lights as well. Oh, loads of reds. Yeah, and that's it. And on this button, the horn works, but because this battery is running really low, I, I don't think it actually works. Uh, you can probably hear it's clicking, but as I said, uh, it draws so much current and uh, the, the, this battery is on like 10 volts, so it doesn't sound, but it definitely works. I tested it, so that, it, that works. And by the, re by the way, the reason I, I decided to go uh, for this horn because uh, the club is really, really loud. So whenever I was using my own, um, what is it, um, you know, soundboards, uh, you would just wouldn't hear it. So I thought that because the first trip is going to be uh, going to go for the club or the museum, I think it's going to be much better anyway. And uh, it's a, you know, just a regular car horn. It was pretty loud so actually i decided that well <laughs> i just put some sponge in the in the horn cavity just to make it a little bit less loud and by the way for some reason i got two for the price of so there was two in the package so this is how it looks like just normal car horn it says uh, 60 decibels so pretty loud and just to show you some other progress as well uh, i have <coughs> I'm about to do the final color on the loco. So this is going to be, well, I decided for a Rhine Gold uh, cream and blue livery. So you can see the cream is on. It's a little bit more creamy, how I remembered, but maybe this is, um, you know, too yellow. But once I have the cobalt blue on, it's not going to look that yellow. Oh, I'm not sure. And as you can see, I'm, uh, paint, well, this one is painted gray. I have, uh, you know, all the horns done as well. I have one of the pantograph assembled. And then I realized that I ran out of, uh, you know, some of the nuts and some of the bolts that I need to do. So I can't really assemble the second pantograph, but this works. I wish I would have stronger springs for it because it's a little bit wobbly. And I'm guessing that once the, once I run with the loco, this is just going to flap around in the breeze. So, yeah, I think it's going to stay like this for the time being. And maybe over the winter, I would just try to get so, um, stronger springs for this. Probably you can see that I've already used two of those. Yeah, just to show you from a little bit closer. So yeah, it works. And I think the idea is, I don't know if it's going to work with the two springs, but 
I have I have this lip in here so I thought that I can get the springs go under this lip and that's going to keep it down something like that it's going to rub the paint off but anyway that's how it's going to work at the moment and this is why it would be better to, to have one springs because it's uh, it's uh, it's too difficult to get both of the springs under the lip but anyway sort of like the first version um, I don't know maybe you can tell that the <laughs> I should have designed this bracket a little bit bigger so I have more space between the, uh, the bolts because, well, the bolts are basically just uh, touching each other and I couldn't put a washer here because then it just wouldn't clear the other bolts. So, ah, yeah. Uh, these are the things that I do in 3D in, on the computer, but once I start assembling it, then I realize that uh, I should have done this and that because I usually don't model nuts and bolts in, in 3D. I just do the main shapes and, well, I just don't realize the, the tolerances and, yeah, well, you always learn something. So what's left for sort of today is I need to finish masking the, uh, the cream layer or the cream colors off. So I think I'm just going to mask this area off completely and I can just paint the last color uh, sort of like next week. And that should be the, well, that should be all the painting done. And then it's just final assembly. So fingers crossed, that's, that's all that is required. So I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.